Are crazy women destroying the West? We are forever reading headlines about the mental health crisis in the West. We're told that we're becoming more and more unhappy and more and more crazy. In many Western countries, mental illness is now the leading cause of disability and responsible for 30 to 40% of chronic sick leave, costing us around 4 to 5% in GDP. But who are all these sad and mad people? Well, mostly they're women. Women are three times more likely to experience mental health problems than men. And they are twice as likely to be diagnosed with anxiety and depression than men. And this situation isn't improving, it's getting worse. Rates of self-harm among females have tripled in the last 30 years and rates of suicidality have doubled. But hang on, I thought we had so much more mental health awareness now. The well-being industry is booming. This is the era of emotions and self-care. Aren't we all opening up about how we feel, going to therapy and working on ourselves? Well, yes, but that may be part of the problem. 70 to 80% of psychologists and therapists are also women. Given that one in three women will take antidepressants in their lifetime, how many of these female therapists are also depressed and anxious? So we likely have many depressed women seeking treatment from depressed women therapists and surprisingly, women's mental health is getting worse. So why are women so mentally unwell in the first place? Well, as Jordan Peterson and others rightly point out, it's because women are temperamentally higher in trait neuroticism than men. They're more prone to negative thinking and they're more emotional. Okay, okay, I know I'm stating the obvious, but why else? Why are they becoming more mentally unwell? And what's been happening in the Western world in, say, the last 50 years or so? Well, for a start, the amount of women in full-time work has increased by over 50%. Similarly, the amount of women who are unmarried and single over the age of 30 has increased from 18% to a whopping 54% in the last 30 years. And it is estimated that almost half of all women aged between 25 and 44 will be single by 2030. So, women are working more and they're marrying and having a family less and they're becoming more depressed. This isn't only bad for women, it's bad for everyone. This is because all the gains made by extra productivity in the economy of things becoming quicker, more efficient and cheaper have been swallowed up by women entering the workplace now that there's two salaries, the man and the woman's, that can go towards the mortgage all that has done is push asset prices up, which means that all the extra money earned goes on rent and mortgages, and there's no lifestyle improvement. All there is is just greater difficulty in raising a family and maintaining a work-life balance. Alongside this, more and more women entering the workplace has brought about freedom-destroying equal pay laws. For example, the UK's equal pay laws covered by the Equality Act mean that men and women receive equal pay for equal work. That is, work that is similar, equivalent or of equal value. But who decides what work is of equal value? Well, it seems that it's all down to how the judge interprets the law. So, for example, we have the shocking story of Birmingham City Council where female dinner ladies argued that they should have been paid the same salary as dustbin men who had been earning more. The judge agreed with them and the council had to pay out around 700 million, leaving the council bankrupt. Or more recently, there's been the case of retail giant Next. After a six year legal battle in which female shop workers argued that it was not fair that they weren't being as paid as much as warehouse workers, the high street brand was ordered to pay out 30 million to equalize the pay. 
In their defence, Nix argued that the pay for the two roles was based on market prices and to ensure the viability of the business. So we now have a situation where judges are telling employers how much they should pay their workers instead of the market deciding. And this is all happening in an increasingly feminised legal system that focuses on emotions, subjective interpretations, hate speech, hate laws, non-crime hate incidents and woke activism. And that leads us to our final manifestation of toxic, crazy femininity. Woke. Since the mid-2000s, young women have becoming more and more left-wing. The growing ideological gap between men, who are more likely to lean conservative, and women, who are more likely to lean left, isn't really being caused by men becoming right-wing. It's actually because young women are increasingly adopting radical far-left positions. Perhaps, given that more of them are entering full-time work, which they struggle with because of their mental health, woke ideas such as harm reduction, focusing on emotions, caring for victim groups, and a critique of meritocratic capitalism appeals to them. If men can work long hours and work their way up the hierarchy quicker than women can, it's easier to call this patriarchy rather than accepting that men and women are just different and that women cannot compete with men. Diversity, equity and inclusion, safe spaces, therapeutic spaces, bringing your whole self to work, the tyranny of HR, harm reduction, psychological safety, emotionality, conformity and aversion to conflict and disagreement, perverse misplaced compassion, perverse misplaced empathy, this is the new academic environment. This is the new workplace. This is the new economy. This is the new legal system. This is the West and it is being destroyed by toxic femininity and mentally unstable women.